Okay, so the other day, I hosted a meetup right here uh, in Toronto. And in this meetup, we had a Q&A session with machine learning engineers from this company called DESA. Uh, it's a company that implements machine learning solutions for other companies, including a bank. And I thought this Q&A session was really informative. Uh, but it was pretty long. It was about 40 minutes long in total. And the audio we got from the event wasn't the best, I would say. So I decided to give you a summarized version of the Q&A session uh, in this video. But just in case you want to watch the entire raw footage of this Q&A, uh, I'm going to put a link to that in the description. And if you want to sign up for future meetups in Toronto and maybe elsewhere, I'm going to put a link to sign up for that in the description below too. Okay, so this Q&A session was with machine learning engineers, Joe, Mark, Helen, Pippin, Danny, and Sachin. And the first question I asked was, what is machine learning exactly? Uh, this is actually something I already talked about on this channel uh, in my video about what can you do with Python, but let me summarize their explanation here. Uh, so machine learning is used when you can't explicitly write an algorithm to solve a given problem. An example of a problem like this is when you want to make a computer categorize images. Uh, so let's say that you want your computer to understand that this picture contains a dog and this other picture contains a car. You can solve this problem with machine learning by giving a machine learning algorithm a bunch of labeled examples. And then uh, your machine learning algorithm, uh, which might be, for example, a neural network, will learn to label new images into either dogs or cars. So that's basically what machine learning does. Uh, it's a way for a computer to learn patterns from a bunch of examples. Anyway, after that, I asked them if they could share some interesting applications of machine learning. Uh, one application Helen right there talked about is how some people have been trying to uh, use machine learning to generate things like art, poetry, and music. Uh, so I asked them how you would actually go about doing that. And then Joe right there uh, explained that for the example of poetry, you can just take a bunch of poems you like and train what's called a language model on those poems. And then that language model will basically learn the statistical regularities in those poems, and it will learn to generate uh, similar new poems uh, similar to the given ones. So I asked them... Does it actually generate good poems? <laughs> but, that's quite simple. That depends what poems you need to learn from. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, after that, uh, Pippin right there talked about how he applied machine learning to astronomy because that's what he's really interested in. Uh, so he was basically trying to help astronomers find more supernova in the space. And right now, it's mostly a manual process. You know, astronomers need to look at a lot of images to find supernova. And he saw that this is basically just a classification problem. Uh, so in this problem, uh, you just need to classify each image into either containing a supernova or not containing a supernova. And he told us that he was able to apply this uh, relatively new technology called convolutional neural networks to solve this problem. And this approach was actually better than the state-of-art method uh, astronomers used to have then. Now, another example uh, Mark right there shared with us was how they helped a bank with their credit card customers. Uh, they basically built a model that would predict whose payments would be delayed uh, based on the past customer information. And they also built a model to predict if each customer would respond to a phone call to remind them to pay. So were you able to actually make accurate predictions yes. of those? Yes, that was, yeah, that was our, our, an early client success for us. And to add on to what Mark said, that model and bank in particular was our flagship project. Yeah. And so that was very successful. Some of you are probably being used by the model are being Yeah. There are the people in this right there are people in this room who <laughs> have been processed by that model. Okay, and after that I asked them uh, what are the best resources for learning machine learning? Uh, they recommended a few. Uh, one is Fasta AI. It's supposed to be a more of a hands-on practical course. In particular, I, I recommend it to this audience because it targets people who are already coders uh, and it's very well done. It was developed by a guy named uh, Jeremy Howard and also uh, Rachel Thomas, who are both very interesting and very uh, good teachers. So please check that out. And then uh, Mark here recommended the machine learning course on Coursera by Andrew Nig from Stanford. Uh, it's also a really popular course. And apparently it's more theoretical and more mathematical than FASTA AI. Uh, another book Mark recommended is this online uh, freely available book called Neural Networks and Deep Learning by physicist Michael Nielsen. 
Anyway, I, I just really find his writing is especially clear. Okay, so those are some of the machine learning learning resources they recommended. But Sachin right here uh, took a slightly different approach. Uh, for him, he got started by uh, learning statistics because machine learning is partially based on statistics. And he didn't recommend any particular resources for that, uh, but for stats, I would personally recommend getting started with uh, Khan Academy and Coursera and just go from there. Uh, you know, I would say the same thing for linear algebra too. Anyway, after that, uh, Joe added this. There's kind of two paths that people are, uh, argue for. There's like the top-down approach to learning and the bottom-up approach to learning. The top-down approach is uh, start with practical things first, uh, start with how to do it, and then get into the nitty-gritty of like what is the underlying mathematics. And the bottom-up approach is start with the underlying mathematics and then work your way to the practical stuff. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say the top-down approach will work better on average for this audience, uh, but you have to try for yourself and see, see what works. And top-down approach being like fast.ai, fast .ai, bottom-up approach being like learning statistics and reading the deep learning book by Ian Goodfellow or something like that. Okay, so one thing they all recommended is working on a machine learning project so you can learn from the experience. Uh, so I asked them, how should people find a good machine learning project to work on? Pick something you care about. Uh, pick a data set related to your domain that you're genuinely interested in. Um, that, that is all the motivation that you'll need. Uh, so that's Helen's advice. And I asked them, how should people go about finding good data sets for that? Uh, they recommended a few resources for that, uh, like Google's AI data sets. And after the event, they also sent me an article that lists good data sets for machine learning. So I'm gonna put a link to that in the description below too. Uh, but after that, Mark also said this. For many projects, you'll find there isn't a nicely curated data set. If there's like something you wanna do or build, then you'll have to come, up, own yeah, come up with creative ways of building yourself, whether it's scraping, scraping the web or... Uh... And then actually a few of them also recommended uh, this website called Kaggle. Uh, which is a machine learning competition website. Uh, personally, I, I found that Capcom is very helpful for me to get started. In addition to that, I also will participate in a few hackathons, uh, data science related hackathons around Toronto, uh, places in the US. And these places are good for uh, talking to other people who are interested in the field, talking to leaders who are in the field, employees in the field, uh, other machine learning engineers and data scientists in the field, and understand what they do. And I say, eventually, a Kaggle is excellent, but it can only go so far. I think a huge skill that machine learning engineers, if you want to go into machine learning in industry, you'd have is working with real life data. Uh, Kaggle is not quite real life data, right? If you're interested in actually working on real life data, a lot of nonprofits actually need people to help out with their data science processes, their data cleaning, uh, because they don't have in house data science teams. And so, a good way to go about getting your hands on real data, actually, as well as contributing to um, data for good, is to help out with nonprofits that are working on interesting problems and might need your help. Um, so uh, there's one more last way of learning machine learning, and that is just go out and make friends with machine learning engineers, and then you will eventually learn. <laughs> Anyway, after those questions, uh, I let the audience ask questions. Uh, one of the questions we got was, why did you choose machine learning out of everything? And here was Danny's answer. And so I thought to myself, you know, what's something that's, that I'm good at and that I can be good at and I use my skills well, and that's something that I enjoy. I am pretty good at like machine learning because, and data science. And when I got into it, I found that it was using a lot of what I really, really knew from physics. You know, it's about explaining the world in novel ways, explaining physical phenomena through mathematical uh, algorithms, and the power, sheer power of machine learning that blew away predict traditional predictive classical analytics really drew me. And so that's what I really found fascinating about machine learning. And there's a lot of promise in the future, more so than blockchain. <laughs> Another question we got was, what language should you get started with if you're new to coding? Uh, Pippin recommended Python. He said that it's because there's a really strong open source community with Python, 
and that you know there are a lot of uh, open source machine learning tools written in Python. And recently, there's also this really strong culture of sharing uh, what you've been working on with machine learning. Uh, he said that that's really helpful too. And the last question we got was, what do you look for when you hire machine learning engineers? Uh, one thing they mentioned is real world experience. Uh, they look for someone who's actually put a machine learning model in production, ideally. And Mark said that they look for someone with real world experience as opposed to just personal projects because there are a lot of challenges that come up uh, when you try to apply machine learning to a real problem in the industry. And then uh, Joe also added this. But personal projects still have a lot of value, yeah. I think. I think people actually underestimate the value of it. It's worth way more than uh, a certificate from a Coursera course or anything like that. It's worth more even than academic courses. I would say if, if you do a hard project, something that really pushes you, and you write good, clean code that you would be happy to share, and you put it on GitHub, and you write a nice summary of that, uh, that will make you stand out more than the average candidate. All right, so that wraps up this Q&A session. Uh, again, in the description, uh, you can find a link to the entire raw footage, as well as a sign-up link for future meetups in Toronto and possibly in other cities. Uh, I'm thinking uh, maybe LA, San Francisco, Vancouver, maybe New York. Uh, maybe I'm just dreaming here, but we'll see. Uh, by the way, this is not a paid promotion, but if you're looking for a job in machine learning, I would totally recommend checking out Dessa's career page because it seems like a pretty cool place to work at. Anyway, thank you as always for watching my videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. I never even taken a single CS or SAS course in university. Uh, you don't need to take CS courses, you can just go to CS soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> you can learn all of yourself.